Hebra is Hebrew that means to conceive or be pregnant, and it's the epithet used by those in Hinduism to denote the god Krishna, as in Hari Krishna. In the book of Daniel, chapter 10, Daniel has a vision of a man wearing a linen cloth designated as the Lord. Daniel distinctly claims that the man's body was the color of beryl. Beryl is a blue aquamarine mineral gemstone. Dan okay, I thought beryl was a different color, so I need to look that up. Okay, so this is the color that the scripture, I believe, is talking about when they say barrel, which is brown. Oh, I don't know. Hold on. Let me go back. Or is this just pulling up? Okay, never mind. I'm slow. Okay, I thought barrel was like a red-brown color. But maybe I just, maybe that's a different color. Okay, so it's a barrel come in a variety of colors. Now, he's saying that it's blue, but we can't just, just go ahead and associate it with blue. Hold on. I'll right, get back to this video. Gemstone. Daniel's relating the Lord's body is blue in color just as the Hindu god Shiva is depicted as blue in color. This is compounded throughout the OT with the Lord's body being related to the color blue of a sapphire in Song of Songs. In the book of Exodus, the pavement. Okay, he just saying all of these colors. Sapphire is a sapphire stone is not blue. Now, see, that's why you got to catch some people because they just start saying stuff. Now, this part I don't agree with because we know. I don't know. Maybe God trying to uh, tell me. Every time I type in something, it can pull up blue. I mean, I thought sapphire was red. Have we been told the same colors? I mean, the wrong colors all our life? See, that's what I'm saying. We need to get our life together, y'all. Or maybe I just need to get my life together. Mm, maybe he's right. <laughs> I don't know. Let's go back. So we're going to get another the pavement uh, under the Lord's feet is sapphire. In Ezekiel, the throne of God is the color of sapphire, or rather blue. 
In Numbers, God tells Moses to command the people to create a fringe of blue on their garments so that when they look at it, they recall the commandments of the Lord. Blue is the color of the Hindu god Shiva because the god of the Hebrews, Jews, is in fact the Hindu god Shiva. Even the Israeli flag of the modern nation state is blue after Shiva. The word Krishna in Sanskrit is Krishna, which means anointed one. Krishna equals Krishna, and Krishna equals Christ, which means anointed one. The word Niti in Okay, and I told you guys that the anointed ones, the two witnesses, are going to be kings. They're going to be kings. The two anointed ones, the kings were always anointed, the kings and the queens. <laughs> like, and I used the example of, because um, I said one of the two witnesses was King David. He was the one who had the lampstand. Um, and Cyrus. Okay, so... Um, but for an example, Mary Queen of Scots was anointed. She was had the title of Christ. So it's the kings and queens who are anointed. They the two witnesses are not going to be prophets. Sanskrit means a guide or law to follow. Krishna plus and the Messiah was Christ. He is what King of Kings. Okay. Et plus following the law of Krishna and put together its Christianity, or rather following the law of Krishna, the Hindu god son of Brahma. The name Christ is still used throughout major parts of India to invoke the name of Krishna. The Greek name for Jesus is Iesus, and Yesu is still used throughout India for the name Jesus. In Phoenician, it's Ayyut, in the Udkog name refers to the kingdom that Brahman was born and came from, which is the kingdom of Ud in northern India, or rather Hindustan, as Krishna or Ayud was born by Brahman. The early church fathers knew their religion was not new, but very old and readily admitted it. And what do I always say to y'all? What did I make a video about the New Agers? And everything, and I said, ain't no such thing as the New Agers. Ain't nothing new under the sun. Nothing is new under the sun. That's what our scriptures tell us. Nothing's new under the sun. Prior to 312 AD, the papacy in Rome used to be a Vedic priesthood. The Vatican in Rome today sits upon the ruins of ancient Vedic edifices. The Vedic priest of the Vatica or Hermitage in Rome was murdered by Constantine after 312 AD. The shivlings of the Vedic Pontiff War before being slain by Constantine are on display in the Etruscan Museum in the Vatican. The name Constantine is in fact a Vedic name for the demon king Cons Datian, who tried to kill Lord Krishna in the Vedas. The Sanskrit Papa or and this is what I was trying to explain to you guys in the angel video. The demons, angels, gods were people. Once you raise your chakras and you open your third eye, you are considered Christ-like. Let this mind that was in Christ be in you. This is what our scriptures say. Till Christ be born in you. Let this mind that was in Christ be in you. Okay, he is the way we need to do, follow him and do the things that he did to be to to be. Okay, listen. <laughs> so you see how he just said Constantine was the demon God. Do you see what I'm saying? Abraham was a God in India called uh he was a Brahmin God. I, we're going to have to. I don't know if I did a video on that, but I read about it in India. This is why our scriptures say, ye are gods, angels, gods, demons. You a demon if you want, don't want to follow the truth, etc. And you go off into all of the demon stuff, lying, stealing, killing, all of that type stuff. You a demon. This is what I was trying to explain to you guys in my previous video. I'm so glad that he talked about this. Rather, the Pope's directive is known as a bull or papa bull, and that's because some of the gods 
that people are literally worshiping are their ancestors. Like literally, this is why you're not supposed to worship other gods. You are a god. Okay, let's go. The dispatch rider of Shiva's directive is the bull Nandi in Hinduism. Why would you worship somebody who just like you? We only supposed to worship the Almighty. Primal Vedicism is found around the planet with nowhere being untouched. The term Soviet is Sanskrit, which is Svet. The term Bolshevik is Sanskrit, which is Balsevik, signifying Russies who are sages. Communist is a Sanskrit term, which is Samuha Nishta. Townships ending with the cognate Grad, such as Leningrad and Stalingrad, come from the Sanskrit Gram, which means township. 2,000 miles east of Moscow in Siberia is the city of Krasnoyarsk, which is named after the Vedic god Krishna. The Caspian Sea is named after the progenitor of the Vedic Rushis. Russians use the word Agon for a fire, and this is named after the Sanskrit Agni. The Russian name Andropov comes from the Sanskrit Indra, who is the Vedic Lord of Gods. St. Paul's Cathedral in London was originally a Vedic Gopal, or rather Krishna temple. The main altar does not enshrine Jesus Christ, but the eight directional Vedic cross or star of the Vedic god Lakshmi. In front of the altar is a statue of an eagle, and the eagle is the mount of Krishna. Overhead on the curved rafter legs supporting the ceiling are Latin prayers beginning with the Vedic incantation, Om, painted in bold block capitals. Along the walls inside are sketched in bold relief, the sages and others taking a holy dip in the river Ganges. They look like cities that have been submerged for a very long time, at a time when mainstream archaeology tells us that we're no cities uh, anywhere in the world. Powerful cross currents made it nearly impossible to dive to 170 feet to the bottom. Still, scientists retrieved dozens of artifacts, including wood and pottery shards. Some of the dates on some of the human artifacts that were brought up extended as far back as 32,000 years. But the oceanographers concluded that the area had been covered by water about 9,000 years ago. So the city had apparently existed from 32,000 to about 9,000 years ago. Mainstream scholars today claim that ancient Indian civilization only goes back four or 5,000 years. Yet, Hindu scholars themselves say that Hindu civilization is going back uh, many tens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands of years. Like the ruins below the Gulf of Combat. And this is what I was telling you guys about Israel being part of Samaria. Now, of course, Israel wasn't a name that came into term till later. But the landmass that they were living on, which has Samaria around it, was always have been there for a while just because those were new people using new names they were the same people Jeez, see what i'm saying prove the hindu scholars right another recent discovery may support their claims our bible this is what i'm explaining to people the 70th week thing that was about okay it was a period of Seven at the eight forty nine thousand years. Daniel said the earth been here for forty nine thousand years, probably over forty nine thousand years. Okay, when you do forty nine times seven, I mean seven times seven is forty nine, and a day equal a thousand years. That's forty nine thousand years. So when the scriptures say the set in the beginning. The, and they talk about the 7,000 years that was talking about, uh, you know, this but in the last 7,000 years. This is this is the time that we're talking about, not not at the beginning of time. This is the beginning of this period. 
this age. Okay. We, we lifting the veil, y'all. Lifting the veil. Thanks to lifting the veil. <laughs> Lies the modern city of Dwarka. Archaeologists digging deep under the city found signs of a settlement once inundated by the sea. Inspired by this clue, they began searching for more ruins in waters just off the coast. In only 70 feet of water, divers discovered sandstone walls, cobblestone streets, and evidence of a prosperous seaport. Scholars declared these ruins to be the remains of the ancient and legendary city of Dwarka. Ancient Hindu texts explain that the legendary city of Dwarka was said to be the dwelling place of Lord Krishna, a deity worshipped across many traditions of Hinduism. The Stonehenge is one of the most important archaeological sites of pre-Christian England. The Druids of Europe were Brahmani, or rather Vedic priests. Stonehenge is the Sanskrit Stavankan, which means meditational bower. Canterbury in England is Sankarpuri in Sanskrit, which means township of Shiva. There was no Aryan invasion of India. Now, I don't believe that Shiva is higher. I believe it's some... Um, Krishna, I mean, I, I do believe that it go way back, but I believe that it's many different gods. And this is what the scriptures say that um, when about Moses' father, say that he worshipped other gods. He had used to worship other gods on the other side of the river. He used to worship other gods. Um, now, him saying that uh, Shiva is... If, Hold on. Now, I'm going to have to just do my research. I'm not going to speak on it right at this moment. But I'm going in the video here. The main point, I mean, if you guys want to finish going to watch this, the main point that I was making, though, is that we come from India. All of this stuff has ancient ties to India. When the Ark, um, after the flood, the Ark landed in Asia. So... Shalom family till we meet again.